Fuck no! I remember you! Hi everyone, I'm going to react to My Hero Academia Season 6, Episode 15, I believe. Um, Tartarus. Last episode was basically a recap. Um, but then they also told us who got captured among the villains and everything. And who died in a... <sighs> Apparently... Well, that's what it seems like. Um, Midnight died, so... Yeah. That's what happened last episode. And before we get into this one, if you guys are my reaction, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and please consider supporting my Patreon at patreon.com slash filmini. And now let's start this episode. And here we go. The last part of the episode made me feel better. But like the beginning part with the Tartarus and people just escaping and everything, I'm like, ah. Alpha One is just, he's the worst, man. He's the worst. You already told Shigaraki to rest, but you have control of his body. And you decide, okay, I'm going to use you. And I'm going to use the normals to free myself from Tartarus. And he remembered that conversation that he had with All Might, where All Might told him that he was not going to get out of it. And he's like, yeah, I probably won't have, but now that I have this perfect synchronicity synchronization whatever between him inside the um tartarus and him outside controlling shigaraki's bodies and the normals and everything he's able to do it he used the the power that he the cork that he had to um the eat that shorts out um electronic stuff like emp and everything emp bomb either way he used that on the outside and shorted it out and because he knew that he shorted things out that means his quirk can activate he used that to break out and break other villains out oh my goodness when i saw muscular you know after those episodes ended i never thought about muscular again or even moonfish or even overhaul i never thought about where they are i know they were captured and everything but it never crossed my mind that they might be in tartarus and they were talking this episode about how tartarus is this place where they have all these um villains you know that they are keeping in check and everything but um as this showed the people, some people on the screen, and you see uh, all for one, but then there were other people in the prison cells also on the screen, and there was one person in the corner, excuse me, that had this black hair, short black hair, it seems like, that was sort of like crashed down. I'm like, for some reason, my, my, my thought went to that person in the corner, I'm like, maybe he might be someone important or something, you know. So I know there were villains there, but it just... For some reason, it never occurred to me that I might recognize some of them. <laughs> so when, oh my gosh, muscular, muscular showed up and then Moonfield just started people. And then um, I saw the girl with the purple hair. There was, you know, I, I kept saying, even in this episode, I kept saying it was only two episodes. I, this episode, I mentioned the purple character, purple hair character that was in the intro. And I'm like, who are you? You know, and it's the only purple person that I saw. Although in the intro, it looked like the person's hair was longer, but then shorter in the prison. I don't know. I feel like the same person. So I'm like, okay, I guess this person is not maybe her time in whatever put her in prison. Either it changed her and now she's going to be like a good person. Because that's how that's what I feel like when I look at the person in the intro. That this person was a good person. But then she was in Tartarus. So either what she did when she got put in there, it changed her. And now she doesn't want to do evil stuff anymore. Or she was there by me. I don't know. Like, is she even supposed to be there? I don't know. But... She, they focused on her, so you know she's gonna be someone important. And then, um, it seems like there was someone, she's the one that opened the door to overhaul as well. So I'm like, oh, <sighs> what the heck, man? So all these villains are out. 
out and about and creating all kinds of chaos out there while all for one is with the others and then he just telling them to protect shigaraki and so that he can heal and then his master plan of getting all for one and no one for all getting one for all and you know becoming the demon lord of whatever man i knew that was his goal ever since the beginning like he was preparing shigaraki to be his main body you know he was gonna take over shigaraki's body and he was gonna be ruler of the the world you know and all of that why is he so insistent on having a one for all like can he not rule the world without that particular quirk or is he because he knows that any person that has one for all is gonna try to stop him so if he gets that quirk away from the current holder meaning deku then he can no other force can oppose him i guess that makes sense since it was if it wasn't for the fact that all might was injured then i don't know whatever he's out and Gecko, I felt so bad for Gecko because he can clearly tell that that is not Shigaraki anymore, you know. And Shigaraki is the person that he's been following all this time. And so I felt so bad for him when he was like, who are you? You know. And W was also, also there. He didn't say anything. Like, and then the long hair was also there. He, they didn't say anything. The conversation was just between those two. And that was it. And then they go from them to, oh, first shot is back to go in his hospital bed. Then he woke up and um, the others came in. They were so happy. <laughs> Shouts up shouts out people, man. That's just him being him, so I love it. And they um he asked about what happened and he just told them, you know, calm down. I'm gonna tell you what happened, but you need to calm down. And then they go to <sighs> present Mike and Aizawa in his hospital room and you know they're just reflecting they're like we did everything that we possibly can but then it still turned turned out this way you know and um as i was like you know just don't think about it how are the students doing oh he's always thinking about them how are the students doing you know and then they showed shoto in his hospital room with the others they're just making sure that they know that they know who he is you know after the revolution the W revelation and everything. They know who he is, so not to, you know. But then he was there thinking about everything, basically, and just remembering where he told Deku. And I'm like, yeah, had it not been for Deku, the path that you were on, it's like, well, he's not, he wasn't gonna become a villain because he was know on the hero track and everything but like he said he was gonna burn out his body and then the siblings came in and then they showed someone else coming in clearly that someone else is the mom you know because if i remember correctly it felt like there was three people coming in as they were showing him before they came into the room and then one of them had something covering their face or whatever it could it could only be her nobody else could be there because he only had apart from Dabby, he only had the two the two other siblings and then the third person could quickly was gonna be his mom he was so like shocked um and then they showed bagogo just like dragging himself out of the room they were trying to stop him he's like you guys trying to stop me you know it's gonna make my condition worse just just let me go and that's when they told him that um Deku was basically in a coma 
that he's not showing any signs of waking up and you know this boy is gonna shock him out <laughs> there is no way and when, when he said uh, if he dies i'll kill him i'm like oh back we go he cares about him you know especially after all the things that he did to him you know ah. <sighs> i love me back we go and i am like so worried about these villains coming out you know now that <laughs> i was thinking about muscular previously deku was not that strong you know when he faced muscular so he, he had a hard time facing muscular that uh that one time but now he, he won't be anything what is overhaul gonna be doing for some reason i thought that maybe um those three especially because they focused on them and also moonfish and the uh, muscular were working with the league of villains previously so i was thinking that at least those two will be aligning themselves with shigaraki but when they were there and um awful one was telling them to protect shigaraki's body and everything they didn't actually show them there so i don't know what they're doing um yeah they clearly showed all for one time shigaraki down basically that that moment where they were talking to each other and they would show one side of shigaraki's face when uh, shigaraki is talking and then show the other side of his face when all for one was talking and it's like ugh. i don't like this that's why i love the intro you know the fact that when um the baby Shigraki comes out of his body and then um, Deku's like there like, reaching out to him and everything. That's what I want. Like, I want him to be free of Shigaraki and just like let go of the hatred that All For One has fostered in him and all of that, you know. They confirmed this episode that Midnight is indeed dead. Thank you.